this book, which is kind of a devotional and informational book about the Christian year. But this little section paraphrases and shortens Psalm 104 and is a great opening for us today. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, our God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty and wrapped in light like a garment. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. We all look to you to give us food in due season. When you open your hand, we are filled with good things. So I ask, Lord, that we could be filled with good things tonight. Help us to open our hearts and our ears and our minds. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Tonight, I am bringing you Psalm 95. Um, I chose this one, and you guys will see later why, because I think it's perfect, especially with what we're doing tonight, uh, coming together with each other's presence and God's presence. Um, so to give you a little context before I read it, um, it is written by David. Psalms are kind of like poetry. They were meant to, you know, use for worship and like praising God, and that's kind of why it's in the, the scripture reading for today, too. It was, it was used as like a, like a repetitive thing to say back and forth. So it's a great way to worship God and like also learn about God and the, in the scripture while you're saying it. So that's a little context behind it. Um, I'm going to read it. Um, yeah, I'm going to read it and then di start digging into it. Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are his people, we are the people of his pasture. The flock is under his care. Today only if you would hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah, as you did the day at Massa in the wilderness, where ancestors tested me. They tried me, though, though, had seen, though they had seen what I did. All right. Kind of let it soak in for a moment. If you guys, if it's helpful for you too, you could bring it up on the side if you would like. Um, but I'm going to start digging into it. I really enjoyed the scripture once I started learning about it um, and picking it apart. It just blew, blew my mind, basically. So I'm going to start with this idea that God is worthy of our praise. Just kind of think about that as I go through this. God is worthy of our praise. Think about this last year with COVID and everything that happened and church being closed and having to be online or, you know, we, 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 we figured it out. You know, we were like, we, were, we came up with great ideas of how to keep church going, but, you know, it's still, you still miss that in-person aspect, and it was like, now we're looking back on it, it's kind of like we took church for granted, and that in-person, like, being able to, like, hold each other's hands while we pray, and being able to greet each other in peace, like, give each other hugs. Um, I know I think, looking back at it now, I took it a little bit for granted. Um, so now we're going to look into why God is worthy of our praise, and why it's a great thing to um, worship him and praise him. And I'm going to break it down into two parts. Uh, throughout this passage, I picked up that uh, often it says, let us, the phrase let us is in there four times. And then several times throughout there, it talks about God's character and who he is. So I'm going to break it down to those, those two parts, let us and who God is. So first, God is the rock of our salvation. When you think about a rock, you think of something that's, I think of like a big boulder, something that's really hard to move. Um, it's just sturdy and stable. And, you know, I'm not gonna go pick over, like I'm not gonna go pick up a boulder and move it. It's just, that's impossible. Um, so think about God as the rock of our salvation. Like Jesus is later mentioned as the rock of our salvation. Um, 
Our salvation then is solid and firm like a rock is. It's unmovable. Um, and we, we are nothing like that rock. We are not like God and Jesus. We're not sturdy. We're not stable. Um, we falter. We move. Um, we're just like a feather. Like we can get blown by the wind in a day. We're totally not like a rock. Yet we still have that salvation like a rock and that firm foundation like a rock in Jesus and God. And we can stand on it and we can grow on it and we can lean on it. And it is our foundation. So God is the rock of our salvation. Second, God is a great God, a great king above all gods in verse three. At this time, um, you know, the Jewish people were a smaller group and there's all these groups all over, you know, the land that have all these different kings. You know, some of them have multiple, some of them have one. So just think about that phrase that God is a great God and he's the king above all gods. They're just small king and they're saying he's the king above all. Like he rules all. He's the great God compared to theirs. So if you think about it in the context, like it's kind of um, ambitious for David to say that. Um, like just think about like the awe that he has also to say he's a great God the kind of respect that David has for him and just the awe he has for his God. And in verse four and five, it talks about how his hands are in the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his where he made it and his hands form the dry land. So the depths of the earth, the mountain peaks, the seas and the dry land, they're all his. They're all made by his hands. So that gives us the image that he is a creator. He created all these things. And then later it says he is our maker. So he's our creator and our maker. He made us. He made everything on the earth. That means everything belongs to him. It also shows just like his mastery over creation. Uh, think about, I think there's a sunset a couple nights ago. I don't know if you guys saw it, but just think, of how, think about how beautiful it was. Like who made that? God did it, that beautiful sight. Or that day, you know, today it was snowing, but it was like such a pretty snow. It was just like delicate and light and just like it looked like a movie it looked like a movie set snow so just think about those beautiful moments you'll have through the day of just like nature god created that because he is our creator all right and then in verse seven it says for he is our god we are the people of his pasture and the flock under his care so this gives us the image that he's a shepherd we are under his care he's intentional and shep like being a shepherd back then was very important. And we had to think about kind of the image that David's trying to make right now. Shepherds are very, you know, they knew their flock. They knew which sheep, you know, were tend to run off. They knew what, like, if they were hungry, if they needed to be moved, like they were in tune with their sheep. Um, so just think about God the same way. He's very intentional with us. He knows each of each one of us individually and he will leave the one you know, he'll leave the 99 to find the one. He cares for us specifically and intentionally. And without a shepherd, the sheep would be lost. They would be exposed to danger. They would get spaced out from each other. They would just be weaker overall. Um, and they would endure the realities of the wild. So without a shepherd, sheep would be very lost. Um, in the same way, we would be very lost without God. And we are under his care. And lastly, um, kind of something else I picked up on his character is the last verse in verse seven, today only if you would hear his voice. So that his voice, um, his character is that he's always talking to us. He's always seeking us out and pursuing us. Um, so he's a God who cares for us and wants a relationship with us and seeks after us as well. So keep in mind these things of his character as I go into the let us um, phrases of the passage. So the first let us phrase is let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud. So think back, um, what are some ways we commonly worship? Do we shout aloud always for the rock of the salvation? Um, do we sing for joy? Think about when you're in church. Are you singing for joy or sometimes, you know, you're just singing and it's just coming out. Um, it's just repetitive. Uh, think about what happens when motion overwhelms you. Um, when you're in a relationship with somebody or think about what you do when you're happy or you're mad. Think about that moment of maybe you haven't seen somebody for a very long time and they're coming back from the airport and you have to run to them and just you're excited and you're happy and you're like, you shout for their name. 
or think about those moments when maybe you're mad at your parents and you shout for their name. It's these huge emotions in us and these relationships that overwhelm us. And, you know, we want to shout out loud. We want to shout out loud for this God because there's so much to be joyful and thankful about for him. So just that expression of emotion is so important. Um, I found some few quotes that explain why singing and shouting and expressing our emotion to God is so important, why worshiping is so important. Um, this one quote, words make you think, music makes you feel, a song makes you feel a thought. It's a way of us to express our love towards God and what we think towards him. Another quote said, those who wish to sing always find a song. So those who love God and like we see him and we're joyful, like we're always going to find a song. We're always going to find a way to worship, even if it's on Zoom. We're always going to find that way. Next, the, the next let us verse is let us come before him. I really, I really liked this verse because it reminds me of when we opened up, we were said, um, let us remember we're in the holy presence of God. It's an acknowledgement that we are coming into his presence and he is in ours. It's this relationship that we are both there together. Um, and just, it's just a great reminder that he is in our presence. Well, he's always is, but this is very special to come into his presence. Um, it's because it's often easy to forget that he's always in our presence. I remember when doing a little Bible study, one of Jen's recommendations, because I was like, oh, Jen, like, we're, we feel like we're talking about his word and we're learning about it. Um, but sometimes I feel like I get off track or something like that. And she said, well, just leave a chair open because that is a visual repre representation that God is there. He is with you. He is in your presence. He is um, speaking his words to you. And I will never like forget that because it is, it's hard for us to remember he's in our presence, but it's important for us to acknowledge that. Acknowledge that there's a connection there when we say that. And then secondly, it says, let us come before him with thanksgiving. Um, thanksgiving can be something hard. It can be hard to be grateful sometimes or hard to be thankful for things we have in our life. But I saw this quote that was really good. We are permitted to bring our petitions to God and therefore we honor, we are in honor bound to bring our thanksgivings. It's so easy to pray to God and be like, oh God, like I need help with this or that. Um, it's less easy to always bring those thankful thoughts to him. So in worship, we have the opportunity to bring those thankful thoughts to him. Um, and the more we thank him, the more we see him working in us and around us, the more we see his presence. Uh, well, secondly, where's the next one? Um, the next phrase is, let us bow down in worship. I don't know about you guys, but it's not often that I bow down in worship. You know, sometimes I do, but there's like few play, play, um, spots in the, you know, the outline of the like, church. Like, sometimes you bow down, but it's not often that I just get on my knees and I'm humble before God. So I thought this was uh, like very convicting and just like a very, like um, kind of like a great way to worship is to bring that humbleness and like you're coming before your God, you're humbling down and you're showing reverence, you're showing submission, you're showing obedience to him. Um, and it also is repeated uh, to worship, like it's, you know, he said this before in the phrase, let us worship by shouting for joy and then let us worship by bowing down. So it's kind of like contrasting ideas to like worship by shouting, but also worship by bowing. It's both of them together, which I thought was interesting to have, you know, it's really hard to have that really high energy, but also to have reverence and humble. Um, but uh, that's another quote. It is not always easy to unite um, enthusiasm with reverence, and it is a frequent fault to destroy one of these qualities while straining after the other. It's really easy to get really excited and like worshiping our God, and often we forget how great and mighty and wonderful he is. Um, so it's important to show that humi humility as well, because humility is a step towards growth and faith and trust, and to live a life with Christ, you're bowing down, like, okay, God, like, lead me in this way. Um, so it's a very hard concept to get in this world because I know we don't often do it. We don't often bow down and, uh, you know, kneel before him. But I think it's a really important part of our faith and of our worship practice. And then lastly, I'm going to come back to the last verse of verse seven. Today only if you would hear his voice. So 
the let us phrase there is let us hear his voice. And that is a very important after we've learned like all these great ways to worship him. The most important one is to hear his voice because through all these ways that we talked about of worshiping or singing to him because we're grateful for him or when we're grateful and we're thankful, we see the ways he works in our life. Or when we bow down, we're still, you know, we're bowing down to him. We're seeing him in our life. We're in tune to what he wants for us. We're listening to his voice um, through those ways of worship. So that can be something very hard to do sometimes is to tune into that voice. Um, but this week, I want to encourage you guys to find ways to worship God throughout your week and to tune into that voice. So maybe you see that beautiful sunset outside. And if you can be, you can think about how God is a creator and a maker and how he made you and you're um, beautifully and wonderfully made and how he's pursuing you. Um, so just ways to think about his voice. Uh, maybe you view God as a great God. So maybe I don't, you, there's just a scripture you read that just puts you in awe of like how wonderful he is. Um, so just think of little ways you can find, you can worship him throughout this week because I think it'll help tune into his voice. Um, because we're told to hear, and we're also told that his voice is pursuing us. Um, we have a relationship with our creator, not because we sought him out, because he is always pursuing us. There's nothing we can keep, we could do to keep God from pursuing us. There is no sin too great, no distance we could run that would discourage God from loving us. From the moment you were born, God has been pursuing your heart. His greatest longing is for a relationship with us. God is after your heart right now. His sweetly, he is sweetly knocking on the door of your heart that you might simply let him in. More than he wants you to do something for him today, he simply wants you to know that he is with you and for you. Respond to God's pursuit today by giving him your heart and hearing his voice. Um, the last phrase I want to bring in is, I forgot what scripture it is, but that um, God is with you always, even to the end of the age. So with that, Think about how God is worthy of our praise, of all his characters. And let's find ways to praise him this week and to hear his voice. Have a great week of worship, guys. Thanks, Allison. And we have just a brief little pause just to reflect here. Um, coming off of Psalm 95. So we'll take a moment to reflect on what Allison shared, and then we'll move into some prayer. Pass it on to Father Dennis. Thank you, Allison, for your words and your encouragement. Appreciated listening to you. So thank you very much. So after each little prayer, would you please respond with, Lord, hear us? And then 
at the end, I'll invite anybody else that would like to join in with some prayers. Um, so we pray for those who are finding this disruption in their lives with COVID, uh, sometimes unbearable, we pray, Lord, hear us. For people who are suffering, we pray, Lord, hear us. For all those who are depressed and abused, we pray, Lord, hear us. For the safety of all our Lewis students, we pray, Lord, hear us. For all young people and young adults who may have to learn how to cope with the uncertainty of life, we pray, Lord, hear us. And for all healthcare workers, may God's grace support them, we pray, Lord, hear us. And now I invite anybody else that would like to share some prayer. Just like to pray um, again for just, yeah, all those who are homeless, particularly in our local area with this snowfall uh, and cold and winter. We pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Pray for those that need direction or are seeking clarity. I'm just looking for wisdom for their next steps. Um, so uh, for those I pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And for all those prayers and wishes and dreams that are deep within our hearts, we offer them to God. Lord, hear us. Hear us. And we'll close with Jen. We'll post together. Is that good? Yep, Father does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, muted. Okay. For a closing prayer, I'm just going to pray kind of impromptu for us and um, tie together kind of what we heard tonight. So thank you, Lord, for being um, our rock. Thank you that we can have hope. Help us this week to remember that we are, um, that you are worthy of praise and let us remember to hear from you as you are pursuing us and calling out to us. Um, help us to find those little things throughout each day that remember your greatness and your love for us and your call to us and that we, we can seek and listen and respond in so many ways. Um, help us to make some space to respond to you, whether it's with strong emotion and even anger or frustration that we can tell you anything, but that also we can humble ourselves before you, we can be quiet and um, just listen and, and be very thankful for, um, for who you are and that you've made us and you've made us well. And so I pray for each person um, here and for those who couldn't make it tonight that we'd remember that we're in your presence as we go in and out of things and move throughout our week remind us of that and let us listen for you protect us this week guide our steps in jesus name i pray amen amen saint john baptist de la salle pray, pray for, for us. us live jesus in our hearts forever 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 Yay! Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, I know it's, this continues to be a strange avenue at times to do this, but wow, I, I that was wonderful, Allison. Thank you. I have to also just say 
in you know after listening to the song uh of grace you know beautifully singing all four of the let us were in that verse you know uh let us sing joyfully let us acclaim the rock and everything so i mean really thank you all um for being here um yeah i wanted to just share one quick thing with y'all since i know since i think we all do know each other relatively i'm gonna